Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to fourth quarter 2023 earnings call. This conference is being recorded and the replay will be available at the company's website at orameminerals.com slash investidores. The presentation will also be available for download. This call is also available in Portuguese. To access, you can press the globe icon on the lower right side of your Zoom screen and then choose to enter the Portuguese room. After that, select Mute Original Audio. Para acessar nossa conferência em português, clique no ícone do globo ao lado inferior direito da sua tela Zoom e selecione a opção Portuguese Room. Ao acessar a nova sala, certifique-se de mutar o áudio original. We would like to inform that all attendees will only be listening to the conference during the presentation, and then we will start the question and answer section when further instructions will be provided. Before proceeding, we would like to clarify that any statements that may be made during this conference call regarding the company's business prospects, operational and financial projections and goals are the beliefs and assumptions of our executive board and the current information available to the company. These statements may involve risks and uncertainties as they relate to future events and therefore depend on circumstances that may or may not occur. Investors should be aware of events related to the macroeconomic scenario, the industry and other factors that could cause results to differ materially from those expressed in the respective forward-looking statements. Present at this conference we have Rodrigo Barbosa, President and CEO, and Kleber Cardoso, the CFO. Now, I'll turn the conference over to Rodrigo Barbosa. You may begin your conference. Thank you. Bom dia a todos. Uh, good morning. Um, we are here to talk about the fourth quarter results and the year end 2023, and also share our guidance for the year uh, 2024. Um, first, uh, the year 2023 was not only important for achieving uh, important financial results, but we did that under the highest ESG standards. First and foremost, uh, we achieved during the year 2023 zero lost time incidents in all, all operations. So the, we now have four operations. We finished building Almas, we started building Borborema, and uh, we could achieve uh, significant results by not having any lost time incidents and uh, making sure that one of the most value that we have, which is saved first for our employees, uh, we are taking care of everybody that works uh, with us, not only our own employees, but the, the third parties that comes to our operations. We have a excessive training for them to achieve these goals. And this is a long term uh, goal that we've been working across the operations for three, four, five years significantly on a daily basis that could result in this uh, uh, lo zero loss time incidents for the year. And uh, we aim to, to maintain this. It's, it's challenging, but we aim to maintain zero loss time. We are, until today, we are the zero loss time. Also, uh, incidentally, we may we aim to achieve this at uh, the 2024 uh, as well. On the, on the, on, again, on the SG, uh, we also innovated uh, one uh, initiatives to help and to bring to Honduras a new source of uh, income. That area in Honduras that we operate is very similar to one one area in Sao Paulo that's producing high quality wines. We brought some uh, experts and that we could test uh, the soil and the weather that uh, in the mine where we operate in Honduras could also provide a, a, a chance for the, the people that work in the, around that area to produce uh, high quality wines. Um, we did that. Uh, uh, this is initiatives is uh, we planted, as we're going to show, um, those grapes in the area that we already mined. Uh, and then instead of planting trees, we are now planting, we will plant uh, grapes and see if that could become uh, a new source of uh, uh, income for the, the, the communities around us. They already produce coffee, so transition into wines could be important for them. Uh, in terms of uh, uh, production uh, in Q4 and also results, uh, we achieved uh, the highest uh, production uh, for the quarter at 69.2 thousand gold equivalent ounces in the quarter. Uh, this is 7% higher than Q3 uh, last year. Uh, we were projecting to be the last quarter, the, the highest one, and we did that. And um, that generated uh, $88 million uh, for the whole year in terms of free cash flow uh, recurring. Uh, going operations uh, for the year, so we, we achieved a 235 
uh, thousands of gold equivalent ounces. And as we're going to see for 2024, uh, we are aiming to uh, continue to grow and achieve higher production as we will share in you know, our guidance as we now have uh, Minosa is on on a running rate in the last quarter. We are already uh, implementing initiatives to, to increase produ production in, in Apoena. Aranzazu continue to be stable. And now we have full, full year armor, so we should be uh, continue to grow in, in 2024. Aranzazu in the quarter, very much in line with our expectations, very stable. Uh, we will see a minor reduction in production that comes from mine planning, but that was, that's not meaningful in terms of changes. We, continue to achieve a very, very strong results in, in Aranzazu. What we will see for the year 24 in Aranzazu in terms of uh, uh, cost, uh, we will see some increase in cost for Aranzazu, basically for three different, two, three different uh, variables. One, uh, in, it's uh, the exchange rate. So the Mexican peso is appreciating compared to the dollar, so that uh, push our cost up. Now, there's some inflation. Uh, we are fighting against inflation, but some inflation is going to our, our cost. And then third is uh, uh, mine sequencing also, uh, but that no, will not be significant. In Minosa, uh, we achieved 17.9, uh, uh, 18,000 uh, ounces of production in the quarter, a new 2% uh, increase compared to Q3. Uh, remembering that uh, we started the year in Minosa very challenging. challenging. Uh, if you compare last quarter of 22 to the last quarter of 2024, uh, it, this is a 47, 50% increase. So during the whole year of 2023, as we were disclosing to the market, we were gradually improving the operations, fixing the, 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 the reduction productivity. And this will, every quarter we will, we will be, we were able to increase production. Now, I believe that we are reaching some running rate and we're already starting the year of 2024 very strong at the running rate that's supposed to be uh, in Minosa. In Apoena, again, we were expecting to, to increase production due to going to Ernesto Pit. So we increased to 15,000 ounces of uh, gold produced. This is a 36% higher than Q4 2023, uh, but also a reduction compared to Q4 on 2022, mostly because we are uh, fourth quarter of 2022, we were full quarter on very high grade of Ernesto. Now we were partially on this high grade of Ernesto. We delayed uh, entering the Ernesto pit due to the heavy rains during third quarter of the year. And so some of this high grade was pushed to the first quarter, which we are now mining uh, uh, during the 2024. Uh, Almas, uh, we reached close to 10,000 ounces of uh, production of uh, gold. That is uh, a first first full quarter uh, in production, uh, rem reminding that the Q3, uh, we had a partial quarter where we, uh, once we declared commercial production during the quarter. Almost, uh, we, as we shared during our day, uh, we were uh, very high production during Q3. Uh, once we reached fresh rock, uh, more hard rock, uh, we, we had a reduction productivity that also affected uh, the fourth quarter production, which was, although an increase compared to Q3, it was below expectations and below the running rate. I would highlight that uh, this, uh, this reduction in productivity during Q4 is already uh, addressed, uh, and uh, we, are, we finished December already at uh, above 1 million uh, tons uh, on the mine, so we are... Uh, uh, very strong in the running rate as we're supposed to be. So starting the year of 2024, uh, very strong uh, according to our uh, plan. In terms of um, how we sustaining cash cost, uh, we we saw a cash cost at 1311. Uh, it's a 9% decrease compared to Q3 as we were projecting very much in line with our guidance that we gave to the market and this reduction. Uh, comes from the high product production in Apoena, high productivity also uh, in Minosa. And now uh, we can we expect the year for 2024 to be very much in line of the, of the year 2023, perhaps a little bit below or a little bit higher, depending on uh, the, the, the situations of, according to the operations during the year. Uh, in, in terms of uh, adjusted EBITDA, uh, we had um, $41 million 
of EBITDA, the strongest EBITDA uh, for the year, as we were projecting to have a stronger EBITDA during the fourth quarter. This is a 37% increase compared to Q3. And that is a result of uh, increased production in operations, as I mentioned, and the house higher uh, gold prices and lower uh, cash costs. In terms of growth, um, I would highlight the company continue to uh, cement our path to the production of 450,000 ounces of gold equivalent. Uh, and that will, as I was sharing with the, as we shared, it comes from the development of three projects, Almas, Borborema, and then Matupa. Uh, Almas, first green fuel project that uh, we uh, uh, built on time, on budget. We finished the construction during 2023. We ramped up uh, in five months. We, we built in 16 months, setting new benchmark in the market uh, compared to the other mines that's being built uh, on budget, on time, and it is already in full production. Board Borema, we updated during the year of feasibility study. Uh, we've, we published this, the feasibility study. We raised the capital to fund Borborema, and we already started the construction, and we are already at 18% of the whole construction complete, and very much in line with our expectations in terms of uh, so far the, on, on, on that deadlines and also um, budget. So we continue to, to path our way uh, to continue to grow during the year 24, 25, and 26. Again, in terms of safety, that's something that we are very proud and the whole is a, it's a, it's a achievement that uh, belongs to the whole team that's working uh, on the daily basis to achieve those numbers. In Almas, we achieved this in June 2023, Apoena in, in July, Aranzazu, September, and then Minos, October. So we are now a four of operations uh, with a zero loss time incidents over a year because we finished the year and we continue to be at the zero loss time incidents until now. On of stability and, uh, and, and the structures uh, as we share uh, with our board, as we share with our employees, and as we share with our investors, uh, we have um, uh, a strong management of all geotechnical structures that is being uh, analyzed on the monthly basis by external parties, by a consultant. So the, and now we have the online monitoring system all across uh, our operations, and uh, we are uh, we. Geo Consultoria, which is one of the most well-known consultant firms for uh, checking uh, stability of our geotechnical structures. And we are uh, with satisfactory level all across our geotechnical structures, which means on the tailings dam, on the leach pads, on the pits and underground also uh, developments. As as I also mentioned, uh, we had a, a significant coverage by the national press in Honduras uh, with this uh, new initiative to bring uh, high quality wines, which in the end of the day, what we want is to bring a new source of income for the communities around us so that they do not depend so much on the mines so they can uh, have other initiatives to have other sources of gains. Uh, we know that uh, uh, mining gold mines has uh, one day we will finish uh, mining there we will have we will replant 100 percent of the areas and then instead of uh, having leaving them with uh, only trees we would like to leave them also with a new source of income that they can benefit from uh, these new initiatives of course this is a three four year test that we need to, to understand if it, it's going to work but we are very positive that this can uh, help significantly not only then the area but uh, it can grow the whole country of Honduras and other countries around uh, Honduras. And the picture that we saw in the in the in the in the corner right, this area that has already been mined uh, uh, in the past, so we are now uh, using this area for for planting grapes and tests if they can be a source of uh, high quality wines. In terms of um, a production uh, going details here, uh, but on the on the left chart, uh, I would highlight on the bars is the production by quarter. In the line, it is is the last twelve months of production. So on the quarter, we had the highest quarter in the year, uh, even highest than the Q4 of 2022. Once we have now almost in production, 
but very importantly is that um, uh, from Q2 to Q3, we inverted the curve that we were having uh, reduction in production of the last 12 months due to the challenge that we had uh, in Honduras in the beginning of the year, then the rain that we had in the in the in Apoena. But now we we could uh, start to increase production again with the 65 gold equivalent ounces production in Q3 and 69 in Q4. So reaching the bottom of 2028, 228 gold equivalent ounces produced on the last 12 months on the Q223, increased to 234, 236. And it's very intuitive to expect this continue to grow uh, along the year of 2024. Once we are now, we should not, we're entering uh, the 20 year with a strong production all across our operations. Plus now we have almost that is contributed to a, to a production increase during the year. And, I would invite you also to look if you want to see two years ahead. Then in 2025, we will see uh, Borborema also uh, production uh, kicking in along the year. So we will, should continue to grow uh, during the year 2025 uh, as well. Next one, I already explained. <clears throat> so in terms of cash cost, uh, Q2, we had an increase compared to Q1. Then in Q3, another increase, mostly because we we passed, as we explained, uh, a low grade and stockpile in Apoena. They had, a, a, although we made cash doing that, uh, the, the cash costs uh, increased. And now we started having a, a higher grade uh, in Apoena again. We don't expect to, to, to have that low grade that we had in, in Q3. We don't have this in the stock, stockpile anymore. Uh, so in Q4, uh, this uh, up, mostly Apoena uh, that we could decrease our cost and somehow uh, in, in Minosa uh, to 1311, which is uh, 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 as we expected to the market. In terms of um, a guidance, so uh, we saw the year uh, of 2023 production of 236 uh, gold equivalent ounces. Now we projected the market to be 244 to 292. Uh, we enter in the, the year with uh, Minosa uh, at the running rate, um, Apoena. Also, we will do some improvements in the plant. We will reach uh, a hard rock ore that uh, has uh, impact over productivity in the plant. And to compensate that, we are expanding uh, a little bit the plant in order to achieve higher production that we had in the year of 2023. Uh, we, as will continue to be very stable and um, Almas is kicking in the year. So we should have a, a full production in the year for Almas that already started the year very much in line uh, with our expectation at the running rate uh, uh, that is expected that we finish the year of 2023. In terms of cash costs, uh, very much in line uh, with the year 2023. Um, there, there, there is difference between the mines. As I mentioned, there will be a decrease uh, in Minosa. There is a decrease in Almas. There is a, uh, an increase uh, uh, in, in, in Aranzazul uh, due to the exchange rate and some, some inflation. All in sustaining cash costs, also very much in line with the year of 2023. And then when we project uh, the, 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 the CapEx for the year 2024, uh, we see sustaining very much in line with 2023, but now we need to add uh, up Almas that also needs to do its sustaining uh, CapEx and operations. Uh, exploration is slightly below the year of 2023. And then when you see uh, the new projects and expansion that we are now including, a Borborema that is under construction. That's why you see this increase from 56 to 144, 169 million dollars. Most of the capex of Borborema go through the year of 2024 and some remaining uh, for the year of 2025. Uh, in terms of development of the project, again, we we not only finished Almas on time on budget, but we did that setting new benchmark in the sector. We are now as slightly over between 17, 18% of completed in Borborema, and we expect to start the, the, the ramp up in Q1, 2025. Uh, most of the, the land work has already been done, and we are already initiating uh, civil works. So we have more than 350 people uh, at, the, at the project. 
Uh, and most, of, as we have, uh, as we did also with Almas, we focus hiring people locally. So we have uh, about 70% percent people of the employees uh, working at the site coming from the city that's nearby uh, Kuhais Novos, which is the closest city to operations. Also, very importantly, is that um, as we are progressing in the project, although it is built 18%, uh, 17%, we already have uh, negotiated or have a very strong uh, uh, already uh, information about the total capex, six, over 61% of the total capex, we are already under contract. So we are very, very much in line with what we were projecting. So uh, yet there's no deviation and we continue to be on time on budget in this project. And then hopefully we'll be able to start uh, the ramp up by early uh, 2025. In parallel, I would highlight uh, very importantly to the, the investors is that uh, this project it starts uh, with uh, reserves around 815,000 ounces of reserves, uh, but we have over 2 million ounces of resources. You cannot uh, say that uh, you have, uh, w for reserves, the areas need to be fully licensed. As uh, one road crosses uh, close to the pit, we are limited on the feasibility study to have only 850,000 gold equivalent ounces of uh, reserves, but as we move one road, that reserves can be more than double, can reach close to million, two million ounces after we, we, we had get the license for moving this road and all the process of moving this road, which is already regulated by law, is in place, it takes time, but we already initiated all the conversations with the NEET, the National Department for, for, for Roads, uh, in order to change, uh, there was, it's, it's a not significant change, but we were quite some time to, to reach that. So uh, that's the, the overview. I will come back with the question and answers and now I'll pass uh, the floor to Kleber uh, that will share uh, and highlight more the financial results. Thank you, Rodrigo. Good morning, everyone. We're going to start uh, with uh, sharing a page with the main financial KPIs the company uh, is reporting with the market. In terms of uh, starting with net revenues, uh, we uh, reported $124 million in, in revenues on Q4. As Rodrigo explained, uh, in a, it's uh, following the same trend as we saw for production. So it's the third uh, increase in a row, uh, um, increasing faster than production because of more favorable gold prices during uh, Q4. Um, in the year, we uh, are exceeding, uh, our revenues are exceeding uh, $415 million, uh, increasing 6% compared to 2022. When we go to adjusted EBITDA, it's a similar trend. Uh, the strongest EBITDA in, in the year uh, at $41 million at Q4. Um, it's also, we also see this trend of the adjusted EBITDA improving uh, over the last two quarters as a combination, as Rodrigo presented, of both uh, uh, stronger production, uh, more favorable gold prices, but also reduction uh, in the cash cost in the last quarter. And then in Q4, uh, we're reporting more or less the same, maybe that we were reported the same quarter last year, $41 million. And also for the year, uh, we're closing uh, stable compared to 2022 at uh, $134 million uh, for the year. When it comes to net income, we're reporting this quarter a loss uh, of $6 million which derives mainly from a non-recurring and non-cash item uh, related to the market-to-market -market, uh, adjustments of uh, Barbode M.A. Old uh, Almas uh, Project Gold Colors of $28 million. I'm going to go uh, at the end of my presentation in more details of this number, uh, but again, the non-cash um, and not expect to be in the future a cash loss. Uh, excluding that impact, uh, our net income for the quarter would have been $22 million positive, also would have been the strongest in the year. And then uh, finally, in terms of cash and net debt, uh, we close uh, the year strong, uh, an important reduction in the net 
that position coming from $112 million by the end of Q3 to $85 million uh, at the end of the year, despite the fact that we paid uh, $80 million in dividends in December. And we finish uh, the year also with a strong cash position of $237 million. Now understand the main uh, items impacting between uh, adjusted EBITDA and net income for the quarter. As we saw uh, on the previous page, adjusted EBITDA of $41 million, of which Sharon Zazu once again uh, is our strongest business unit, um, uh, reporting um, EBITDA of $80 million during Q4. I would highlight also the improvements uh, in Minos and Apoena. Uh, Minosa, uh, we're seeing uh, for the fourth quarter in a row increase in production, but also especially in the last quarter reduction, significant reduction in, in, in cash costs and, uh, and therefore improvement in EBITDA, uh, exceeding $10 million in the quarter. Apoena also uh, in, with important improvements uh, of uh, EBITDA compared to the last uh, quarter, $9.4 million, and now was uh, despite the challenges, um, we reported $5 million uh, EBITDA, a positive EBITDA in the quarter. Amortization depletion, uh, once again, it's been consistent uh, over the quarters at $11 million. Finance, uh, we, we recorded finance expenses of $37 million, of which, uh, as I said, $20 million is uh, non cash related to the gold colors, Burbank and Almas, which I'm going to go over more in detail later. On this quarter, we are uh, reporting uh, income tax uh, gain uh, of $4 million. This is mainly due to the recognition on this quarter of uh, deferred tax assets of $7 million at Almas. Uh, and this is because Almas, uh, before uh, it reached commercial production, uh, it incurred uh, in, in losses for a couple of years as it had no revenues. Those losses in Brazil, they generated uh, uh, income tax assets, which could not be recognized in our balance sheet before Almas declared commercial production and was profitable. So we see that as, a, as also positive news, uh, recognizing this $7 million, which are gonna become a, a cash savings in the future. Then other items, uh, $3 million expenses, uh, bringing the uh, net loss in the quarter at $6 million, but uh, again, the pro forma excluding those market-to-market -market items would be positive at 2022. Then on this page, we bring a, a, a detailed analysis showing the changes in the cash uh, and equivalent positions of the company throughout uh, the fourth quarter of the year. Here on the far left side of the page, we see we started the quarter with $179 million in cash. Then more to this uh, left side of the page is what we call a just free cash flow to firm, which is uh, the free cash flow to firm generated by the four mines in production, excluding the investments we do to uh, expand our operations and in exploration. So we see it was a, a strong quarter. Uh, the mine is in production generated $38 million. Uh, we already highlighted uh, uh, the stronger EBITDA, also a uh, positive working capital generation uh, in the quarter. Then uh, here in the middle of the chart, what we call investment for growth, how much we invested, for example, in uh, acquiring the shares of Altamira, pending exploration and expansion CapEx, the total for the quarter was $9 million, which uh, is going to be uh, much higher for the next quarters as uh, the, the construction of Roborema uh, advances this year. And uh, to the right side, um, the financial items, which I will realize the $21 million we received uh, at Borborema uh, related to the uh, royalties uh, and the payments of dividends uh, we made in December of $80 million, bringing the cash to $237 at the end of the quarter. In uh, looking at the same analysis uh, that I showed for the quarter, this was for the entire year of, uh, this, this page shows it for the entire year of 2023. Uh, we see that they just said free cash flow to firm. The, the mine is in, in operation generate $88 million. Uh, 
which was more than enough to pay for the investment uh, for growth of the company. Uh, we invested $74 million to grow the company, of which $25 million uh, in exploration, which are going to increase our mineral reserves and mineral resources and increase the life of mine of the company. And the final phase of Alma's construction, Alma's ramp up. Uh, and then uh, to the right side, again, the, 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 the items, um, the free cash flow from financing activities, uh, highlighting mainly the proceeds from that, um, that we raised to build Berborema mainly this year, uh, and the $28 million uh, cash flow, cash outflow dividends, which we paid in June and December. And, and then to conclude, uh, so this is uh, the analysis as uh, referring to the more detailed explanation about the $28 million uh, non cash uh, finance expenses, which we recorded at the quarter. So uh, to understand it, starting the explanation with uh, the, the, the top side of the page, what happened in the business. Uh, so in September, uh, the company had about 175,000 ounces in gold colors uh, in its books, uh, mostly related to the um, Almas uh, Gold uh, Color Risk Management Program, which we entered uh, a few years ago, in the first phase of the Borborema Hedging Program. In December, that 175,000 ounces increased to 298,000 ounces, so it was increased up 70% because we completed the Borborema Gold Hedging Program, coming from about 80,000 ounces of gold colors to 215,000 ounces. At the same time, uh, during the fourth quarter, we saw a sharp increase in gold prices, which is very good for our, our business. Gold prices appreciated more than $200 between the end of the two quarters. So the combination of uh, having more gold colors in, in our books and um, higher gold prices at closing had a different impacts in our balance sheets and p &Ls, in our p &L. In the balance sheets, uh, we we see the the, the impacts of a fourteen point five million dollar uh, cash cash gain a revenue, uh, which was the premium paid by the banks to participate in the Borborema uh, hedging program. We collect already out of those fourteen point five million. We collect already four million dollars in twenty three, and are going to collect another ten point four million dollars by June twenty twenty four. Uh, and uh, on the other hand, uh, following IFRS standards, at the end of each quarter, we needed to uh, to do a, a market to market adjustments uh, in our balance sheets of all outstanding positions. And because of the increase in gold prices, uh, the market to market position of those open derivatives uh, generate a liability of $43 million at the end of the year, which we consider um, and we expect to be a non cash liability because of two reasons. Uh, first, uh, all the open positions uh, we have in our books, uh, the strike prices are uh, of these gold colors, the coal strike prices are way above spot prices. So uh, spot is around 2000, 2030 now, and the ceiling prices for these derivatives are above 2400. And the second, uh, we expect to, to hold all these positions until maturity, which means if uh, market conditions stay where they are, uh, this liability will disappear over time uh, without uh, cash impact to our. And uh, with this, we end our presentation and uh, open to questions. Thank you. Very well. So just a, a few uh, a summary. Uh, as you, you could see, a very important year for Aura. Uh, first, we generated $88 million on recurring free cash flow to firm. That was more than enough to fund the growth, uh, but we also can leverage it to fund the growth and also uh, pay the dividends. We, and we did all of that uh, under the highest ESG with the zero loss time incidents, doing the right thing on the SEG standards. And uh, as important as uh, the, the results is we set 
uh, the, the the standards on the fourth quarter. We increased production in, in Minosa, in Apoena, in Almas, and we set the standards to start the year of 2024 uh, very strong, uh, in much, very much in line with the, our expectations, and now having uh, Almas on true production, and then building a board board EMA to start the uh, ramp up in early 2025. So it was a very important year, which we achieved important results and setting uh, the path to the two 450 uh, gold equivalent analysis by annualized by the end of 25. We are going to start the question and answer section for investors and analysts. If you wish to ask a question, please press the raise hand button. If your question has already been answered, you can leave the queue by clicking on put hand down. Our first question comes from Ricardo Monegaglia with Safra. You can activate your microphone. Hello, good morning. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Uh, I have a couple of questions on EPP. Do you expect more volumes coming from Ernesto in Q1 relative to the Q4? And and maybe what is the what is the timeline for the plant's capacity expansion that you mentioned in, in the press release? Maybe some budget for this expansion would be nice. Second question on, on Borborema. Uh, I understood the projects on time and on budget, but just to, to get a sense of what are the key milestones in the project execution that could define if the project remains on time and budget. And, and lastly, a, a quick question. Uh, are there any legislations under discussion in Brazil that could affect some sort your exploration works? That's it. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Ricardo. Uh, so first, Napoena, uh, there, is, there is a remaining uh, ore in Ernesto that we are now mining in Q, Q1. Not necessarily be more than we mined in, in, in Q4 last year. <clears throat> now, and then we, we'll be switching more to North the uh, Pit. Uh, North the Pit has a, a harder rock that decreased somehow productivity at the plant, but we are doing uh, investment to, to upgrade the plant and increase our capacity so that we can achieve even a higher production compared to 2023 during the year of 2024. Um, Borborema, I'm not sure if I understood the question. Can, can you please uh, repeat? Yeah, sure. Uh, so what are the key milestones in the project execution or construction that could, uh, that, that you see in 2024? Like what, what will define if the project remains on time and on budget, what are the key deliveries for 2024? Yeah, it's, it's a daily deliveries, <laughs> but uh, I think the first one is finishing land work and uh, this has been accomplished. So now entering the civil works <coughs> and then during the second semester, uh, we will also start building uh, and assembling uh, the, 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 the plant. One important milestone is the delivery of the mill. Uh, which is expected for the fourth quarter uh, of 2024, which will allow us then to start commissioning uh, and ramp up during 2025. So all civil, wo civil works and starting assembling, civil works during this, this semester, starting assembling during the second semester, and then uh, finishing assembled with uh, the meal to be, to be delivered on the fourth quarter of the year. Our team has already visited uh, the supplier in China I'm uh, very impressed uh, how diligent they are on schedule, on program. They are ready. Uh, and and, and the, 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 the meal is being built uh, also on time, on budget. We don't expect yet any kind of the delays. And then you asked about the regulation in terms of to affect exploration. I'm not aware of any uh, regulation that would affect our exploration uh, program for near mine. Uh, we have most of the areas that... Uh, we are mining or doing exploration in this area that has a it's a farm or not a close indigenous area not close to to highly protected uh, areas in terms of uh, forest so we do not expect uh, the, the the regulation to interfere in our exploration program in brazil thank you Next question from Roman Rossi with Canacor Genuity. You can activate your microphone. Good morning, guys. Um, yeah, I have a couple of questions. Um, regarding 
but what am I, Rodrigo, you mentioned that once you move the road, you will double the amount of resources. Uh, do you have any sense of, on what this could represent in terms of MPV? Yeah, we 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 are upgrading the the the, the feasibility study. We will publish as we we do that. Uh, yet we cannot uh, uh, do all the disclosures, but uh, uh, you you have. I would invite you to to understand and to make a simulation in two ways, right? The first is uh, if we extend the the reserve, uh, we can do that before moving the roads. We can increase our reserves just by having the permit to do that. But of course, you can just put in production as uh, we move. Either, but we don't want this uh, these new reserves to be added at the end of the life of mine. So that's why what we are doing, we are doing uh, building a plant flexible enough for us to increase our capacity uh, once we have this permit to move the road, so that we can advance those kind of reserves into the production on the year four, five, or six this uh, of Borborema. Again, uh, three years, three, four years to move the road, and then you can start thinking about increasing production uh, in the project, uh, going to from 2 million tons production up to 3, 3.4 million tons of uh, production uh, by the year of, uh, after four years. Okay, perfect. Um, the second one is regarding um, the hedging. It's probably for Clever. Um, you have... 10,000 ounces cash at EPP with uh, 2,100 uh, ceiling prices. And this is expiring between March 2023 and December 2025. So I just wanted to get a sense on how these derivatives are expiring, because for example, for 2025, my uh, gold target price is above that ceiling, right? So I just wanted to understand uh, what, what could be the potential impact if gold prices go above 2100 yeah it's uh between now in the in the maturity they they are um about straight line uh Roman ex expiration so uh, they are not concentrated in 24 or 25 it's on quarterly basis there is like uh they, they are spread okay perfect perfect um and Finally, regarding dividends, based on, on your current policy, it seems like you wouldn't be paying any dividends during 2024. So what are you seeing for the year? No, we we don't have this policy that would limit us to pay dividends in 2024. Our policy is 20% uh, of EBITDA minus recurring capex. And uh, we should keep uh, with this policy, except if we find uh, a new M&A opportunity that would require more than the uh, cash uh, that uh, we are project. So we are we continue to to project uh, dividend payments. Yes, for 2024, according okay. to our policy, which is 20% of the EBITDA and recurring capex. Okay, awesome. Thank you, guys. Next question from Diego Castillo. Good morning. Thanks for the presentation of fourth quarter 2023. When are you expecting to start Matupa and how are you expecting to deliver the guidance of 450 production in 2025? Was this guidance postponed? No, it is not postponed. Uh, Matupa uh, is in the process, final process of licensing. We expect to have uh, the license to, to start the construction uh, by the end of the semester, by June, July this year so that we can start construction uh, right after. And then they will enter in production by the end of 25. So we continue to, after Matupai production and Borborema in full, uh, annualized uh, by the end of 25, reaching the 450,000 gold equivalent ounces of production. And again, as we, you could see, we did not put uh, the the, explore, the the construction capex for Matupa in our guidance because this still requires licensing. Then needs to be approved by the board to start construction. So, so then we will revise the guidance for capex. Uh, but uh, we are now moving the process uh, to reach those milestones. I would like to remind you that to ask a question, you need to click on raise hand.
Once again, to ask your question, you need to click on raise hand. Our next question comes from Eteoclis Siqueira. You can activate your microphone. I think if he's making the question, he's on mute. I'm afraid he gave up. Um, Eteoclis, you can activate your microphone. Okay. Please wait while we pull for questions. Next question from Guilherme Nipis with A40 Club Investimentos. You can activate your microphone. Hi, uh, so this is Guilherme Nipis from XP. So I have one question here. Um, what do you guys expect for Alma's operations given the the, the contractor issues that you faced during the last quarter. So just to make sure I understood, we could expect uh, operations to be normalized in the first quarter of 2024. So starting the year with normalized operation to be on track to deliver the production guidance ramp up for 2024. Uh, thank thank you. you for the question, uh, Guilherme. Yes, uh, as uh, we finished the year with the movement of the mine at the speed as it should be, so we already entered uh, January and Q1 of 24 at the expected speeds of production in Alma. So we are very much comfortable to be reaching the, the, the full year of the production of the, the year 2024 according to our guidance. Thank you. The question and answer section is over. We would like to hand the floor back to Mr. Rodrigo Barbosa for the company's final remarks. Well, thank you all. As I mentioned, very important year, uh, important milestones, zero lost time accidents, $88 million of recurring uh, cash flow, $28 million of dividend paid at 6% of dividend year in the year, third year in the world that we have reached the highest dividend, one of the highest dividend yields in the sector in the world. Uh, we finished construction of Almas on time, on budget. We ramped up on time, on budget, setting new benchmarks in, in the world for building uh, greenfield projects. We started construction of Borborema, fully funded already uh, in, in, during the, the Q3. Uh, and we did all that uh, doing with a real zero loss time accident. So very proud of what the team is achieving. Yes, we had some challenges in production. I would uh, invite you to see that uh, we finished the fourth quarter without those challenges. We fixed uh, the, the operations in Minosa, Almas already at a full uh, running rate. Uh, Apoena also with a very strong plan to increase production during the year of 2024. And others as well, uh, very stable for the year of 2024. And then we continue to build Borborema in 25. We will add production of Borborema along the year. So we will continue to show growth on every quarter from here until we complete the Matupa project. So I thank you all for the quarter and then I invite you to also to, to follow up with our, our update and resources and reserves that will be on the AIF. And then we will be updating the market also with the milestones as Borborema being built. So thank you again and feel free if you have any uh, additional questions, you can send message to our investor relations and we'll be glad to, to answer our questions. Thank you. Our conference is now closed. We thank you for your participation and wish you a nice day.